So yesterday, Cook's Bay, um, the temperature was pretty warm and it was cloudy. We had a good day. We caught a whole bunch of perch, a bunch of pretty big jumbos, like 13 inches, and two pike. One of them was at least 36 inches. It was pretty big. But the main technique that we were doing is we would drill a hole, we'd look down with the camera, see what's going on down there, and then we would use um, lipless crankbaits to call the fish in. Like this is the rip and wrap that size. Really noisy. We would just, you know, jig that thing up and down. And you'll notice that if there's no fish down there, um, if you call them in with a rattle bait, oftentimes you'll see a bunch of perch just move in, right? So basically rattle bait, different colors. I was using a sil this silver blue color, which is one of my favorites. Mike was using a, a more of a hot fire tiger color. We'd call them in, we'd see them on the camera come in and then we'd switch techniques. Yesterday, the, the bite was pretty light. Um, one of the things that I um, was catching the most fish on myself, um, I got this little 23 inch light. This is a 13 fishing tickle stick. It's the one that has the flat tip, super, super sensitive. I didn't get the ultralight, I got the light because on Simcoe, oftentimes you're fishing deeper water. I like to have uh, just a little bit more power if I'm using some slightly bigger jigs. So the deal for me yesterday, you probably can't see this, but is a little, this is a 16th of an ounce tungsten, also 30, 1 32nd of an ounce tungsten and tipped on that. Uh, Mike was just using a bare tungsten, he was catching fish and I have just added a little Berkeley, it's a three quarter inch, um, Berkeley ice, um, I think it's called a mayfly. It's just a little black and gray, slightly translucent little nymph. And uh, basically, it's really nice to have a camera because you can really see how much, probably 90% of people overwork their baits. They're just jigging it up and down. Literally, you can just, just slightly twitch, even just slightly shake your hand, and you can see your jig just pulsating up and down. And these fish were super spooked. And I think if you were overworking your bait, which is what a lot of people do and honestly what I did a lot before I could see it on camera really really subtle with the with the jig so that was my finesse rod um, I bring a few rods so I had a rattle bait rod I had my finesse rod and then also my main stick um, this is that new uh, Fenwick Tecna this is a 28 inch medium light 28 inch to me is a perfect um, it's a perfect rod if you're inside of a of a flip over because it's not so long if you're fishing a hole right in front of you, but it, you know, it's not super short like a 23, so it's nice. This one is very crisp, very, very light. I really, really, really like this rod, this Techno. I got two of them, and I'll probably end up getting a third one next year. But again, it's a medium light. I prefer medium light if I'm fishing, um, even rip and wrap, something a little bigger. Um, this is a VMC rattle spoon. It's, it's a little heavier, it's more than an eighth of an ounce. So if you're using something a little heavier, even a little vibrato like that, I like using a medium light because you're fishing deep. I'm fishing a, a four or five pound braid, I forget, with a three or four pound fluorocarbon leader. I like the rod to be a little stiff, really crisp, because when you're fishing deep and a perch grabs it, I just want to be able to just set the hook and not have a whippy little ultralight. Like I wouldn't want to use this thing with a big, you know, a big rattle bait, right? So I'm gonna use a medium light. And I found this rod is pretty much, if I could only have one perch rod, it would be this rod. For Lake Simcoe anyway. Uh, another lure that I've been doing really well on, this is called the Lindy Perch Talker. And it's actually pretty cool because I really like chain baits because it's it's a combination of a bait that can attract fish. Um, like for instance, say you're a, a bait that normally would attract fish like, I don't know, a spoon, right? This freedom, freedom spoon here, this hammered minnow. This attracts fish, right? But it's not super good at finesse. So like this attracts fish because it's got all these beads that you can jiggle and dangle around and they clink around and you can hear them clicking and the perch get curious, they come up to the bait. But then when they come up, if they're finicky, you can literally just hold it there. And if you have a minnow head on there or a live minnow, the minnow is just twitching around on there and the, the perch will commit to the minnow. If they're aggressive, you can work it pretty aggressively, but if they're finicky, it's also a really good finesse technique. So really, chain baits, I really love chain baits. Me and Andrew have been using chain baits for years. Like for years we used, um, this is the Blue Fox Nomad. Basically, I think since Blue Fox is owned by Rapala and VMC, all the Blue Fox um, ice fishing lures are now VMC, right? So they have VMC versions of all these now and they're, you know, they're a little nicer, but chain baits, really good. Finesse also brings in fish. So I mean, like it's a super versatile bait and these things, they sink pretty fast. 
they come in different sizes. I had gold yesterday. Um, gold is something that I like to use when it's cloudy. And uh, silver is something I use when it's sunny. I don't know what works well for you, but that works well for me. But anyway, another chain bait um, that I've really been killing on is this little cast master. It's actually got a little triple treble with resin, glow resin. I've had the perch grab the resin, but I've also been um, taking this hook off because there's a little clip. I'll take the hook off. I'll put a minnow head on, I'll clip it back on. That's a trick that you really should use is taking the hook off, putting the minnow head on the shank of the hook and then clipping it back on because the perch can't peck it off as easy. I can get like 10 perch on a cast master like this. And this actually, this little cast master is what I caught that 36 inch pike on. And I honestly think if I hadn't been using a chain bait, um, he would have scissored me off because he had it like this in his mouth and the chain was just rubbing on the hooks. Um, sorry, not on the hooks, on his teeth. So he had it like right in the corner of his mouth. And I think that if I hadn't been using a chain bait, if I had been using something, you know, just like a regular spoon, he would have just scissored the line, you know. Um, another really cool lure that, you know, it's a classic is this one actually is a, a jig and wrap. This is the tiniest size you can get. And this is actually goby color. I really like that Rapala has a lot of really realistic colors and Gobi on Simcoe is a necessity. What I'll do is the same thing, put a minnow head on the on the treble there. That's also a search bait, but it's also a good finesse bait because they'll hit it when it's just sitting there too. The second pike that I caught, I actually caught on this VMC rattle spoon tipped with a minnow. Um, this is a UV glow one, which I really like, been doing very well. It was a very dark day, <clears throat> pretty cloudy. So we were using all glow. We did really good and yeah basically that's what happened yesterday yesterday was a it was a great day uh we had the underwater camera down there which is this little markham unit here this thing really a little bit expensive to buy a camera but 100 percent worth it uh the first day i fished with, with andrew with that camera he was just like game changer and then me and mike went out yesterday and he said the same thing. He's like, game changer. You can drop it down. You can find fish. You can see fish. We saw pike just swimming around. We saw um, we saw some catfish swimming around. You'll see perch, bluegill, bass, whatever. But not only can you see the fish and find them, but you can see when they're biting. And and it's kind of it's it's kind of cheating, I guess. But it's fishing, and it's you know it's 2020. But I think the the biggest thing with the camera I like is the fact that you can learn so much in a short period of time just watching the fish react to your bait. I mean, if you're if you're working too aggressively and you see the perch are just, you know, they're, they're looking at it and they swim off, you can slow down and literally just let it hang there. And sometimes, especially when you're fishing like a little tungsten bug like that, like this is a pretty big one, but a tiny one, and you're just like letting it hang there, they come up, they grab it, and they spit it out before you can even feel it. I don't care how sensitive your rod is, if you have a spring bobber, I don't care. Sometimes perch are uber, uber finicky and they just inhale it, spit it out instantly. So when you have a camera, you can see them eat it. And sometimes, I mean, I'm sure this happened to you if you're ice fishing, you'll feel a bite, you'll set the hook and nothing's there. It's because the perch will oftentimes, they will not be grabbing the hook. You know, say you have a minnow on, they'll grab the tail. They don't grab the, the head with the hook in it. Or even, you know, like a perch talker, like you'll see them peck at this and you'll set the hook and obviously they're not grabbing the hook or the minnow. So with an underwater camera, you can see when the hook goes in its mouth. Again, feels a little bit like cheating, but hey, it helps you catch jumbos and pike, everything. It's really, really, really helpful for perch fishing. Really, really helpful. Um, I think I'll just, uh, I'll show you real quick what we, the things that I really recommend this season just have been working great for me this is a new Berkeley power bait um, ice series this is that little mayfly I was telling you about it's three quarters of an inch um, they come in a lot of different colors it just looks like a little bug all these little tentacles works great five bucks for like 14 I mean it's not terrible um, another thing um, kite fish wax worms or maggots work great Another thing you can also do is you can add um, a soft plastic bead. These are Kitefish um, 8, I think they're 8 millimeter natural peach. Another thing I'll always have is some Berkeley Power Maggots. You can tip that on if you don't have real maggots. And the last thing is also another power bait. This is the Power Bait Whip Worm. I don't know if you can see that. It's two little balls with a long tail. That hooked on a little tungsten has this really subtle little whippy action and it's it's been doing good. Anyway. 
I've been rambling. It's like 10 minutes. But anyway, if you've watched this far, thanks. And uh, we'll be doing more videos coming up soon. So tight lines, guys.